Yeah, yeah. Profile fans, it's Nate with MMA Profile. I'm with the world BJJ champ, Golden Gloves champ, MMA pro fighter, and Ricardo Laborio, black belt, Kelly Anderson. Crossface, how'd you get that name? Uh, Crossface was a name given to me um, because of my wrestling background, and I used it a lot in um, competition, but I uh, made up my own submission, the Crossface Crank. Uh, I like to think that Khabib stole it from me. I'm the first one that did it way before there was a Khabib, but uh, yeah, that's where it came from, a little Khabib cross-face crank. So tell me, how'd you even get into fighting? Well, uh, how I got into fighting uh, is through wrestling. Um, growing up, um, I idolized my cousin. His name is Troy Michael, he's a stud wrestler. Um, and I grew up watching him and uh, just really admired him and his work ethic and how tough he was and and just his soul and spirit and uh, so that really got me into wrestling and then as I got older and I went to college and wrestled and um, after I was done with college I really just wanted to com compete still and and not work a nine-to-five and so I started experimenting with boxing I did a bunch of amateur boxing matches uh, I competed in the Golden Gloves. I won the South Carolina Golden Gloves. Um, and after that, I started getting into jiu-jitsu. And I started going to jiu-jitsu tournaments. And uh, I was friends with Jeff Munson um, from well, when I was a little kid. He were from the same area. And I saw that Jeff was competing a lot. And um, it kind of motiv motivated me. So I went to a tournament, and, and Jeff was there. And uh, I actually had a match against him. And I beat Jeff uh, by some points. and. He was really impressed with me. That was right after he won ADCC. And, uh, and uh, he invited me to come to ATT and, and got me in contact with Ricardo Laborio. And uh, they actually brought me down to ATT for a fight camp when uh, Tiago Silva was fighting um, Rashad Evans. And so I got brought in for that camp and I really meshed well with the guys. And, uh, and they offered me a job as a wrestling coach down there and I took it. Jeff Munson's a freaking beast. How is the, how how is that guy wrestling around with that guy? Um, well, Jeff actually was a mentor to me, um, especially after I went down to ATT. Kind of took me under his wing. Um, he taught me a lot about his style, which is kind of like a mix between jujitsu and catch wrestling as well. And uh, we just really hit it off. And uh, he actually got me on a bunch of international fight cards with him, and kind of took me around and kind of showed me the business part of it too and and uh, just always really appreciative of Jeff. So tell me about American Top Team down in Florida. Is it uh, everything that everybody thinks, thinks it is? Is it um, horribly tough? American Top Team was amazing place. Uh, everybody there is super talented. Um, I got to train with the best people in the world. Um, that being said, fighting is a really unforgiving sport and and hard on the body and it takes a toll on you after a while. Um, we would spar like three times a week at, at ATT and it wasn't just like regular sparring you would find at a local gym. It was people getting knocked out and teeth getting knocked out. And it was just, a, it was the funnest time of my life. It was also a really big part of my life where I was learning a lot and learning a lot about myself and growing as a man. And um, I wouldn't take those experiences back from anything. Now tell me about your um, when you went and fought worldwide, internationally. So I fought in Switzerland um, a couple times. I fought in France. Uh, I was supposed to fight in Jamaica, but uh, we got down there. And the, long story, but uh, the cage was not complete, and that fight wound up getting scrapped. But um, I got to travel to Serbia. I got to travel to Holland. I got to go around to a lot of different places and uh, train and fight. And it was an amazing experience. And that's one of the, definitely one of the benefits we get when you, when you fight and you take it seriously and you can get to a higher level. Uh, you can travel all over the world and you get all these great experiences that, that most people wouldn't get. 
And how did you sign up for Bellator? Well, uh, I didn't really sign up for Bellator. Um, I competed on Ultimate Fighter, and unfortunately I lost the, the fight to get in the house against the guy who won the house. I had gotten, uh, I just wasn't prepared for that fight. I was a little out of shape and uh, just didn't work out. And sometimes, like, failure brings success. And sometimes when you think you're at your lowest, like, success is just right around the corner. And uh, I was looking and I saw the Bellator had a show in Reno. And I thought, well, I'd love to fight in front of all my friends and family. So my manager contacted them and they got me on the, on the show. And uh, they wanted me, if I won that fight, they would put me in the light heavyweight tournament. And that was my opportunity to one, proved myself that I was uh, on that level. And two, it was a great opportunity to make a good amount of money. And, uh, and I jumped on it and I got with Bellator and I got in the tournament. I fought four times in four months, which was really hard. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, after my last fight, uh, I got triangled by Liam McGrary. I got caught. Uh, he's a stud fighter. And uh, I was training again for another fight with Vinny Marglies uh, in Titan Fighting Championship. I was going to fight for their belt. And I was riding home from the gym and I had a scooter at the time and I got hit. And uh, I wound up having to get a knee surgery, a couple knee surgeries, and my shoulder was really messed up and kind of put a damper on things for a while and wasn't really able to finish out my, my career like I wanted to. You came back to Reno, so go ahead and tell me how you got a combat sport and fitness started. Well, uh, I came back to Reno from Florida, um, rehabbed my knee and got better and uh, decided I wanted to open up a gym. I was tired of working for other gyms in town and kind of building up their programs and I really wanted to kind of start my own thing. So one day I was just like, you know, I'm gonna do it. And I just went and found the cheapest place I could find and rented it and slapped some mats down and just kind of put my heart and soul into it. And it took off. Um, after one year being in that spot, we moved to a, a, a spot that was quadruple the size and uh, it's been growing ever since then. And what are you currently doing now? Um, right now, um, I've been trying to get back into shape. Um, I just affiliated with uh, Snake Pit USA Catch Wrestling. Um, Joel Bain is an awesome guy and he's given me a lot of support and uh, hopefully opportunities to go compete again. I would really like to go to Japan and fight. Um, I also want to help grow the sport of catch wrestling. Um, that's kind of my roots. I love Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I'm a black belt. It's been my life, but I want to get back to the, the core of who I am and which was wrestling. And uh, it's fun because I'm also getting to learn again and I have a coach again and I have people supporting me and pushing me and that believe in me. And uh, as an athlete, that's what you want from your coach. You want them to believe in you. You want them to push you and, and you, you, at least for me, I thrive off that, I would say that trust and that like faith in you, that really motivates me. And so what I'm, what I'm doing now is uh, I'm gonna start competing in catch wrestling a bunch. Um, I'm also gonna do the AD, ADCC trials, try and make it to Abu Dhabi. I mean, I'm 36 years old and I don't have a lot of time left. So I'm trying to really push myself to get back in shape. I'm lifting, I'm running, I'm training with the guys. Um, I have two other awesome grapplers in the gym, uh, Elias and, and Laird Anderson. They've been helping me out a lot. And, uh, and the future's looking bright. You know, I have the support from Joel who He's a great guy and, and he's very knowledgeable. He's a BJJ black belt, the judo black belt, and he's, uh, he's like the leader of the Snake Pit USA catch wrestling. So um, with their support, with Laborio's support, I'm feeling really, uh, really confident and I'm feeling like I wanna get back in there. Uh, I wanna start competing a lot. I wanna fight again and hopefully I can get a fight in Japan. So just in case some of our viewers don't know what catch wrestling is, explain that. Uh, catch wrestling is basically the oldest form of grappling. Uh, it was before Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, it comes, the origins come from, from Japan and, and, and Europe and South Brazil. Um, and it's just, uh, it's kind of not, has gotten the recognition that it deserves. I don't think that um, back in the old day, there was a lot of really good catch wrestlers, but it's kind of died down and, and now there's a resurgence. And like I said, Joel from Snake Pit USA, he's really pushing to help grow it. and. Uh, and I really hope they're looking towards me to, to help grow it on the West Coast and, 
and possibly be the face of it and that's what I really really would like so tell me some things about your gym like your successes not just winning titles or winning fights but just maybe losing weight or you know finding people uh, to look up to and become somebody uh, what I love most about my gym are the people in my gym um, we're all I know it sounds cliche because every jiu-jitsu gym says this but it's really like we're family uh, we all love each other and support each other. What makes my gym different than most gyms is that we all really love and care about each other and support each other. Um, whether it's in fighting, jujitsu, or even our kids, if they're doing a sport like basketball or volleyball, you know, we all go and support and, and we all just want everybody to be successful at our gym. And I think that's really sets us apart. We spend time together too, outside of the gym. We go on trips to the river together. We watch the fights together. We go have dinners together. And I think that's really important to create a community in your gym where everybody feels comfortable, everybody feels accepted, everybody feels loved, and like they belong there. And that's what I really try and, and make a, I try and make it like a, like a, one of our pillars of faith, I guess you could say in our gym is, is to just help each other out you know it's super important so tell me some about your most memorable uh moments with people from your gym um man i have so many we fought so many fights already in our short time um some of the most memorable uh i would say one would be jimmy white's fight in so southern california where he stepped up and fought their trap champ he only had i think he had two fights and hit the champs uh of that promotion his opponent backed out and nobody wanted to fight the guy and Jimmy said I'd, I want to do it and he took an opportunity he took a risk and uh, he really he really showed up that night and he won the belt and uh, and that was a memorable night for me um, another one was uh, Connor Coyne his very first fight um, he fought for a heavyweight belt and uh, he he wound up knocking the guy out. He weighed like maybe 200 pounds, stepped up against a guy who had more fights and more experience, and he went out there and knocked him out and just showed like bravery and tenacity and all the things I kind of really preach at my gym. And uh, he did all of that. Um, and then also um, Cam Sandoval, he's a stud. He's always in the gym. He's always working hard. He uh, takes fights whenever, wherever, whoever, and, and he's a warrior and, and kids like that kids like Connor and and Cameron and Jimmy and Gordon Ralston and Autumn Norton and, and Wendy Freeman and all these people they all make me super proud because their work ethic you know I never have to ask these people to do extra when they have fights they're doing it um, one of the most memorable events we've had was that uh, King of the Cage here in Reno where we had like eight of our guys and we freaking dominated the whole event and uh, everybody just showed support and the whole place is going wild for our fighters and uh, you know we all live for those moments. People that are watching that probably want to become part of a CSF or even meet you or train under you, where can they find you? Uh, we're located at 75 South Wells Avenue uh, right next to Jub Jubs. Um, we offer MMA, kickboxing, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Snake Pit USA catch wrestling, cardio conditioning classes, um, basically everything you'd want in one location you know what's good about our gym is you're not going to have to go to this gym for your kickboxing and this gym for your jujitsu and this gym for your, your wrestling and this gym for your conditioning we kind of have everything all in house all in one place so any fights you've been in that have made you a better fighter a better person uh, maybe uncovered a, a secret that you just weren't seeing um well you know, those hard fights, the ones that really make you dig down deep, it, it really pushes you and it makes you grow as a person. Um, you know, I've had fights where, where it's been back and forth and, uh, and you really have to dig deep. And, and that's something that when it gets hard in a match or you've cut a bunch of weight, uh, it's easy to like give up and it's easy to take the easy route out. So it takes a lot of courage to like dig through in spots or especially in a fight when you're really tired or you're getting beat up and you know you have to make a comeback um you know a couple of those fights for me one was uh rodney wallace he's a ufc vet total stud and uh we won a three-round decision with him and uh and i just you know he has that kind of knockout power where 
it, it, you know, you can get hit at any time. So you kind of always have to stay focused and stay calm and, and breathing. And, and before, I guess, before that fight, uh, maybe I didn't have that like Zen energy or that calmness that you need. And, and in that fight, I definitely learned how to pace myself, how to control distance, how to have footwork, how to uh, put my grappling together with my striking. And, and I feel like that was really a turning point for my career was that fight. This new catch wrestling thing sounds like it's a pretty exciting moment in your life right now, and it's something that really has uh, been passionate on your heart. So uh, go ahead and give us some more about that. So, um, you know, I'd like to give a shout out to Kenny Lester and to Joel Bain for kind of pushing me in this direction. Um, you know, I've always been a fan of catch, and I've always studied the history because I feel like history in any sport is super important to know. Um, but, you know, Kenny Lester got me a match with uh, Quentin Rosenwig uh, coming up here in November. Uh, he's like one of the best jujitsu guys in the world right now, and, and they're trusting in me to, to make a statement for catch wrestling. And uh, we recently affiliated with Snake Pit USA Catch Wrestling, and it's something really exciting because there's not a lot of gyms on the West Coast that has catch wrestling going on right now. Um, so we have that event coming up, but you're gonna, I'm going to be competing in catch wrestling a lot more. Uh, hopefully I can make it over to Japan and, and fight in Pancrase or, or some catch wrestling or even pro wrestling out there. You know, I've been given the thought of giving pro wrestling, a, giving it a shot, you know, and putting myself out there. And, you know, I'm not getting any younger and I, I want to make a statement, you know, and I want to end my career with a bang. So, you know, I'm hoping that this catch wrestling will really catch on for me. Hopefully we can get some contacts in Japan. Hopefully I can get some MMA fights in Japan. Hopefully I can get some pro wrestling in Japan. And uh, that's what I really, really want to do with my life right now. Um, I want to continue running my gym and growing that. And I want to have my own personal successes again, you know, and that's, that's kind of important to me. Uh, I've been feeling a little bit like, um, like I've been wanting to get back to it. And it's been my life, you know, I've been wrestling since I was five and I'm, you know, that's like 30 years of wrestling experience that I need to share that knowledge and I need to put it back out there. And there's no better way to do it without, uh, than to affiliating with Snake Pit. And they're gonna push me and uh, Joel's an amazing mentor and he's gonna help me grow my business a little bit more. And I'm really looking forward to it. Cool. Well, you heard it all here from Kelly Anderson and his future, his past. So uh, catch us on the next MMA profile. Thank you. Yeah, yeah.